We are going to go to Claw's favorite segment. This is Claw segment. Jets wild. Hello. Okay, Claw. We've um, never done that before. Where did you even get that? <laughs> I, I, do that on, I, I do that on the show every week. The uh, fact that the, the fact that you don't listen to the show, that's probably the reason. <laughs> so we have a lot of things going on in Jet World. We have some interesting comments made by Joe Namath about <laughs> Zach Wilson, about the the defense. He doesn't think that Robert Sala is a good coach. He doesn't think that Joe Douglas is a good GM. He thinks that the team has been poorly constructed, and he's extremely frustrated. So my question to you guys is, is Robert Sala the guy, or do they need to move on? And I will let Claw, you know, take this on because this is his segment. All right, man, listen, we are clearly operating in panic mode. <laughs> this is nothing new since the fourth snap of our regular season. This shit has been upside down. We're living a bad dream. Superman died in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> so now, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're trying to figure out who's the next up. They're trying to be loyal to Zach. The fan base gave him an opportunity because he won that first game. And maybe he understood that, yo, all I got to really do is just give the defense a break. That's it. Let me get, let me get two, let me get two series minimum, maybe three series. And the defense has enough breather to be like, all right, cool. We could come out there and win the game for you, fam. We got that. But homeboy is scared shitless every time he steps on the field. Before before you finish, before you finish, Claw, shouts out to Hove. Our man Hove, he says, sad to say, there shouldn't be Jets watch anymore. There's nothing to talk about. (laughs) Hey, Hove, do me a favor. Why don't you just back off? (laughs) Chill out. Nah, but you're you're, you're, you're right, though, Claw. It's, It's, you know, can you see something from the kid? Like, some hope. He is... He's uh, listen. I remember when they were having their quarterback issues last year. Mike White comes in the game, and the team was wearing shirts of Mike White. It just tells you how much this team does not like this kid. They'll never like him. Mm-hmm. This is not somewhere that he's going to succeed. It's just not gonna happen. Bro, I was at the Mike White game. The energy in the building changed. Yeah, and the team looked different. The throws looked different. The atmosphere was it was different, bro. Yeah, they they yeah. got to get a change at that position. I mean, I, bro, I know and where is where is Mike White now? In Miami, hanging seventy doing on people, doing doing his thing, <laughs> hanging seventy. And why is he gone? And this bum ass little kid is still here. <laughs> this, yeah, this I didn't understand. Y'all, that. Yeah. Like, to let Mike White go was a mistake. Because you could have you could have easily had him on that roster, bro. And then let alone like, all right, cool. Hey, we bring in we bring in another quarterback because you know what we gotta have depth. Who do we bring on? Trevor well, Simeon. Trevor Simeon. Yeah. For mm-hmm. what? For what? You could get a Nick Foles. You can go get. I mean, I hate to say it, Carson Wentz. You can go get Matt Ryan. I, yeah, he, he, he's done, but he ain't done, done, done. Yeah, Matt, Matt Ryan. Matt, 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 Matt Ryan might be I'll cooked. I'll take bro. him over Nick Foles, bro. He might be cooked, sir. He bro, might be I'd cooked. Take, he might be frickacy cooked. I'd take Jamie Foxx <laughs> over any of these guys. <laughs> right Will he be missed? I'd take Shane Falco in a heartbeat if I could. Uh, you take you bro, like, Shane Falco? Would you take Cap Rooney? <laughs> I'd take Uncle Rico right now. Over anybody, bro, because this is not it. Like oh. the missing link for this team is a game operator. That's all we need—a game manager. Right. Yo, mm-hmm. three series on offense. All we need, even if we can't score, the defense will win the game, bro. Right. Right. And we can't get that off. So the fact that Namath has something to say, that goes to show you that he, though he doesn't want to die being the last guy. Right. He thought we had a chance, and granted, we had a chance. We had everything lined up, and then, you know, the fuck, whoever lives underneath the, the stadium said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
He grabbed up. They grabbed him up like the Undertaker, oh, and that was it. Man, dude, I never forget just seeing him run out of that tunnel with the flag. So with it was the flag, it was, bro. It was the dopest scene I've show. ever seen in a football game ever. Like it was fire. It was fire. And for it bro. to end like literally ten to twelve minutes after that, bro, it was like, come on, yo. Nine eleven is still a bad day in yeah. history in New York, bro. I tell you right, right now, that shit ain't right. never yeah. gonna be nice day. They, I don't care if the blueprint came out that day. None of that shit matters, bro. Nine eleven is still the day of sorrow. And twenty three years later, you got a reminder. So here, here's a question for you, Chloe. Here's a question for you: Is Robert Solid? <laughs> <a guy? laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm gonna keep it real. He, he needs to win. He needs to win. I don't think that Joe Burrow, they're going to turn his back on him because it's a whole thing. It's a whole package. I'm not Joe Burrow. Joe Douglas is going to change his back on him. There's too much invested into this year and the next year to do that. Mm. What I will say is that the offense is still not clicking because why? We can't get the ball out. Yeah. So he he has to turn around some wins. He has to – I mean, he could be the motivator and all this shit that the guys want to play for. That's cool. But if we're not winning at the end of the day, you're on the hot seat, bro. And – there is the rumor if you if you didn't hear uh, uh, if you didn't hear Claude that the um the defense they're starting to get a little bit frustrated with the head coach here. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like you know, but they they for the for the pack that they're continuously backing this kid that's wearing them out. Right. Yeah, you, and like, you making me work more. Yeah, and and they need to take a key from Seattle. Because that's what split up the Legion of Boom and Russell Wilson. Right, absolutely. Russell Wilson was making mistakes. You barking on these dudes, Richard Sherman, Malcolm J. Um, what, what Malcolm was, what's the name? But you're not saying nothing to Russell Wilson when he's making his mistakes. Yeah. We can take that, you know, for a game or two for Zach to try to get his confidence up. But when we couple games deep and you really going hard on people and we got our quarterback putting us in the worst position ever and you're not even saying anything to him. It's going to cause a lot of division in the team. So for me, I was mm-hmm. never really a big uh, fan of Salah. I think he has shown me something that he can be a head coach in this league just because he put that defense up and they were a top defense. But at the end of the day, it's an offensive league. And when you get a young quarterback, yep. if you're not going to have an offensive coach, you need to have that coach put him with somebody who's really going to show him the way and put him on the right path. And the fact that Salah hasn't done that, we're going to have to start looking at you. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to because I don't feel like you're the problem, but shit rolls downhill. We're not going to take – the GM's not going anywhere. Joe Douglas not going anywhere. He's going to get rid of the coach before his job gets out of here. So uh, they're in a bad situation all around. No, it's a bad here, – here, look, I'm, I'm going to give you what I really think is the key, the key points to really look at this season. Zach Wilson – got the dub the first game, relying on his team, threw a touchdown, the the wide receiver made a play. The crazy part is the thing that broke his confidence was playing the Cowboys. And Michael Parsons broke that team down Mm -hmm. and broke him down to the point was, oh, shit, what am I doing? So that was that. Outside of that, the Patriots game, yeah, it was horrible offensively, but it was still a close game. So the defense is still keeping us in these games. It's when there's turnovers on the other side that they had Zach forcing the ball all the way down through trying to get in the um in the Cowboys game. That's the game that we got blown out by the most. <laughs> hold, hold with the comment <laughs> of the night. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers coming out with the flag and dying four snaps later was exactly when Apollo Creed came out. With James Brown and four. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hope is better. Hope is better. Dude, dude, spot on. Spot on. Yo, but like, hold on. Mm-hmm. I got to I gotta push back on some of it. I, I feel like, one, number one, I think Salah is a terrible coach. Okay. I think mm-hmm. him letting the team wear shirts of the backup quarterback last season is one of the worst things I've ever seen anybody do for a locker room. You can't, that means yeah. he has absolutely no control of his locker room. Like if you have, you can't have play, like he's supposed to be your, yeah. your starting quarterback. He's supposed to be your future going forward. Right. Right. So what do you think that's going to do to his confidence 
if the if the if the the, the 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 town was already turned on him, the fans was already turned on him, and then you got the team internally showing everybody, the whole world, that we have no faith in this dude. Right. How is he supposed to go forward and perform after that? That's true. So now you come this year, you already told him he's not good enough, but we're gonna keep you. We're gonna we're gonna groom you and help you get better. You bring in Aaron Rodgers, that's supposed to help him. Now he goes down. The entire offense was modeled off of Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Y'all brought in Nathaniel yep. Hackett, who was terrible in Denver. Absolutely yep. dreadful as a head coach. You bring him in, he's only ever had success with Aaron Rodgers. Right. So now with Aaron a complicated Rodgers, system. With, with a complicated, complicated system. system. Go you ahead. know what I'm saying? So now you, you, bring, in, you bring him in. He, Aaron Rodgers goes down within four plays. And then you throw in Wilson and expect him to perform right away. Y'all won the first game. It was, you know, he, he didn't, you didn't ask him to do much. Now you're going to ask him to do more the next week. But he, it, he wasn't running the same offense that they were running in the preseason. Everything was different. So as an offensive coordinator, you have to tailor the sure. game to make it easier for your quarterback. And in this entire process, the Jets have not done anything to make the quarterback's life easier at all. The offensive mm -hmm. line is terrible. He doesn't get time to throw. He's pressured on almost half of his throws. I Listen, I don't think he's a great quarterback, but I don't know how you can expect him to be a great quarterback. Yo, we're, we're in week four. They started turning on him week two. The fans and the team. The team is ready to implode by week three. How is that possible? All, all because, I mean, yeah. the reason because of that, uh, Pete, is because they, Aaron Rodgers was the, was sold to them, to the media, to the fan base, to everybody that once you get him, everything's going to change, right? And they bought into that. They bought into that. You saw it in training camp. You saw it in hard knocks. You saw how they even were speaking to the media. You had DJ Reed talking about this is going to be a historical defense, all of these things. They were so confident because of they had number eight behind them. Once he goes down, mm -hmm. they go ahead and say, yo, our whole offseason, our entire offseason plan, everything that we've been working towards, keeping him healthy was the job. And we couldn't do that. Now it's all chaos. It's right back to where we were last year. It's like and it's like being in a in, in a bad, abusive relationship, right? You think that things are going to change. And it goes right back to that at the snap of a hat. Like, you know, how are you going to feel? And this is what they're going through right now. It's like, yo, they never imagined at any point, even jokingly, that Zach Wilson would be the quarterback at any point this season. And the fact and that the, mm -hmm. in reality, they can't handle it. And, I, I, and that's, I, why, that's why I have to blame it. Joe Douglas. Yeah, yeah I get you. That's I get you. No, you 100%. got Aaron Rodgers. You didn't do your due diligence to get a quality backup or at least a quality third stringer. Yeah. And that's why I can't really blame Salah too much because, like I said, I didn't come in really, you know, being on the biggest side. But how much of the decisions are, are his? Right. How much say does he have in all of this? You're just giving this guy pieces and telling him to make the shit go work. Well, the defense is working. Mm -hmm. And then the offensive piece that y'all fucking – that y'all put everything on to the point where we don't even have a good backup, and we can't even go out and buy a new backup because we didn't hired all his old cronies. Like that's on Joe. So, right. it, but but like I said, shit rolls downhill. So if they have a mm -hmm. bad year again. It's gonna be on Salah because Joe gonna have to try to save his ass. But nah, my, my, my other point. reason for saying that is Salah too is because you have to have control of your locker room, right? So after the first yeah. game, you got you got players tweeting stuff out, you know what I'm saying, tweeting stuff out and then deleting stuff after the Cowboys game uh, or how many carries I got and all this other stuff. Then you got right. the next week. Then the next week, you got right. players talking about, oh, the defense. You, you got players leaking out to reporters that the defense is about to implode. Like, yo, you got to have week, week three. Your week, week three. three. Yo, week three, bro. Yo, it's still technically preseason. How are you? Yo, you, there have been some terrible teams. There have been some bad teams in the NFL over the years. You've never heard stuff like this coming out of the locker room. That's true. You've never heard stuff like this because you got to, as a head coach, yes, he's a defensive coordinator. He's a, he's a defensive coach. But at the end of the day, you have to have control over everything. And when you don't have control over everything, that's when things go 
go bad. You, I saw it with Joe Judge. Joe Judge, he was a terrible coach. He was a terrible mm-hmm. coach, and he thought he knew better than everybody. And when stuff like that happens, and you have a bad dude at the top, it just messes everything up. And I think that's what that's one of the bigger problems that they're having with the Jets right now. He wants to be a player coach, and he wants to have let everybody be themselves and everything like that. But there's no discipline in that team. Not they don't fact. have any structure. That's big facts. And it doesn't seem like there's any Mm -hmm. leadership either. There's no veteran leadership that's stepping up and saying, yo, yo, nah, we shouldn't do this. It shouldn't only be on the coach. You should have players in the locker room that are that are able to step up and say, nah, this is not how things work. Facts, because outside of the coach, the person we hear from the most on the team is Sauce Gardner. And that just feels Mm -hmm. weird. He's too young. Right. He's too young. He's not gonna be that big dog that loud walking ways. Yeah, so like all, all you hear from his second and third year players, the the running back, the the wide receiver Wilson, um, you, you hear Wilson. From Sauce, like yo, you're not hearing from any veterans in that locker room. But yeah. what, what I also don't like though is the fact that Salah is so steadfast in saying that, it, uh, that you know Z- Wilson is is the is starter. No, 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 no. No, Why he don't got no power? But you got yeah, exactly. to You got to. He got nothing behind him. But you got to. He don't got no power, saying. bro. He's not saying that he's a great player. All he's been saying all week has been he gives us the best option to win, and he's not wrong because you don't have nobody else. Yeah, give me, give me some Boyle. No. Give me Tim he's Boyle. Playing, he's playing word semantics. That's all he's doing. Give you me don't want Tim Boyle. Boyle in there, I take, bro. I take it's a script. It, it can't be worth it. It can't be worth it. But this is my thing. What, what do Claw? Let me ask you. What do Jet fans logically expect to come from this season? What is your after with Aaron Rodgers out for the year? What are your expectations for the team for this season? Realistic, the, the number four pick, and, and you know, and that's why I was telling I was telling you, um, BJ, like, yo, if it was me, if I'm a Jets fan, yo, I want Wilson in the game for the rest of the season because if he's yeah. as bad as everybody says, that means we're gonna have. A top five pick, right? And then we can get one of these better quarterbacks yeah. that's coming out of the draft. Dave, I'm gonna let you finish, bro. Yes. But let me tell you something: the Jets can't get that shit right <laughs> <laughs> because they'd make a bad pick anyway. No, no, not at all. Two years ago, they had the opportunity to be the worst team in the league, and oh, yeah. they decided to hang some. Big ass victory over Jacksonville for no apparent fucking reason, or Detroit, one of the two. Back and by you. doing so, <laughs> they didn't get Bojack Horseman. Right, could have had Bojack Horseman as a quarterback. Could have had right Bojack now. Horseman as your quarterback. So this is the repercussion for all of that. So we got Aaron Rodgers, the next Alex Smith, and at the end of the day, we don't have him right now, and we don't have anybody. So hey, who's the third string? Boils, bring them on. I don't care at this point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I listen. I I've seen enough of Zach Wilson. I don't care to see enough. I, I don't care to see any more. Give me Boyle. Give me Simeon. Give me whoever you want off the street. 